Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is the first in a series on the project, which I'm calling the CW Flea. Now what it's going to be is a simple CW transmitter, but don't click away yet. Wait, wait until you see what's going on here. So tinkerers and experimenters use the tools that are available to them at the time, right? The electronics, the, the whatever's available. Uh, and if we go back in time and we look at the early days of ham radio, amateur radio, in the early 1900s, the tools of the trade were vacuum tubes. And a lot of early hams, they'd get a receiver because uh, they would be interested in radio and they'd want to listen. And then they'd get interested in getting on the air and they'd build their own transmitter. And it was almost always a simple CW transmitter because that was the easiest thing to put together. A lot of people would later on would go into building far more complex transmitters or even transceivers. But the experimenters and the tinkerers, their first projects usually were a simple crystal controlled single stage oscillator that put out enough power for them to get heard over the air. And the tools that they had available were vacuum tubes. And so that was what they would use to tinker with, was vacuum tubes. You come forward to my generation, when I was uh, a young, young lad in the 1970s, 1980s, we had transistors. And that's what we tinkered with. And a couple of years back, I built a simple CW transmitter. I have it here in this Altoids tin. And it's just a, uh, a simple coal pits oscillator and an amplifier stage. I'll show you a close-up picture here in a moment. Um, probably could be better. Uh, I'm sure I didn't couple too well between the uh, oscillator and the amplifier stage and the low pass filter was okay. Harmonics were well subdued down below where they needed to be. So it works and it puts out uh, around 150 to 200 milliwatts, not a lot of power but I did make contacts with it. But, but for me, we had transistors and small discrete components and through-hole PC boards, and that's what I tinkered with. Well, today, the experimenters and tinkerers, the kids of today that are playing around with electronics, they have modules, they have microprocessors, microcontrollers, um, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, they have uh, surface mount electronics that are mounted on little PC boards that they can plug into their Arduino or their Raspberry Pi. They're tinkering with with Legos, Lego electronics modules. So I thought, let's build a simple CW transmitter using the tools that the tinkerers use today. And that's what this project is, the CW Flea. And this is a collaboration too, by the way, with Zactech makers of the uh, LP1 Whisper Beacon, which I have and I did a video on. Um, and Harry over at Zactech, uh, he's all excited about this too. He's going to be doing some PC board design and he's probably going to be producing a sellable ready for air product based on this design too. So you'll be able to just buy one and plug it in and get on the air with it if you don't want to build it through Zactech. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be a cool collaboration between me and Harry. Um, I have ordered parts over a week ago and Amazon still hasn't shipped them. The chip shortage, I'm guessing, is the cause of that. So today I'm just talking about the design and uh, I'll show you a block diagram here of the transmitter and we'll talk about that. And uh, if I have the schematic done at this point, I'll, I'll show you the early parts of the schematic, but you know, that might be part two. Part two of the video is, of this series is probably going to be the actual prototype with more technical detail. But it's a very, very simple design. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, easy to put together, uh, so that the tinkerers that are using today's tools can easily put together their own low power CW transmitter using the things they're familiar with. There is gonna be an analog component to it though. There's no getting around the low pass filter, for example. You're gonna to have to wind two or three toroids, but they're easy. Uh, we'll go through that in the, the next video. Um, there's going to be a few discrete components like a transistor to drive a relay for the transmit receive switching. So there's going to be a, a little bit of, of, of that, but mostly the main blocks of the transmitter, if we look here at the block diagram, 
is an AT Mega microcontroller, an SI5351 clock generator chip for the VFO, and then a, trans a transmit receive relay, um, a power output section, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. The inputs are just a key input for your, your Morse key uh, power, and then tuning. Now tuning, this is, this is something I came up with when I built my 630 meter CW transmitter and it worked really well. To keep it as simple as possible, so you don't need to deal with a potentiometer or a calibrated dial or trying to get any of that, tuning is just gonna be two push buttons for frequency up and frequency down. Don't click away, listen, listen to this, this is cool. The CW portion of any of the bands is relatively small, right? Just 60, 70 kilohertz worth of spectrum usually. So whatever band it's built for, you only have to worry about tuning over a fairly small chunk. And since this is a transmitter that will be used in concert with a receiver that you already have, the receiver will be your side tone for when you're sending, but also a key component for tuning the transmitter. I call it spot tuning. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but that's what I call it. Um, the way it will work is you'll tune your receiver to the frequency you want to operate or the station that you want to, to answer. Maybe you hear somebody calling CQ. Then you'll press one of the up or down buttons on the transmitter and it will generate a signal but not turn on the power amplifier. It'll just generate a signal that the receiver will hear and it'll start moving the frequency through the range. So you'll, you'll hold one of the buttons until you hear your signal, your, transmitter, your transmitter's signal go whoop and you'll let go of the button, and then you'll tap the other one to bring it down to where you want it. You know, So very quickly with just the two push buttons, you should be able to tune the transmitter to the frequency that you're on with your receiver uh, with the proper tone pitch You know, for whatever you like to, to operate at, 600 hertz, 700 hertz, 800 hertz. You'll just, you'll just use the buttons to bring it to where you want it. Tone matched with the station you're going to call or at the pitch that you like to operate at when you're when you're transmitting. So tuning will be very, very simple and, and quick, and I think it'll be quite intuitive after you fiddle with it just a little bit, you know. So we'll, we'll see in the prototype in the next video how well that works. I've done this with my 630 meter CW transmitter, and it worked great. Um, it, it made it very easy. So that simplifies the design even more. So that's basically the idea here for the CW Flea is going to be using modern electronic tools that people are experimenting with now to create this old school simple CW transmitter that you can use with your own receiver and actually get on the air uh, and make contacts with. So that's the project. Um, that's what's going on. Obviously I'm stuck right now. I'm waiting for parts. I've started working on the software just blind, you know, coding it based on how I expect things should work and I'll be able to debug that and test it once I get the prototype built. So the next video, not the next video, probably two or three videos down the road whenever I've got the parts and got the prototype together, the next video in this series, we will look at the prototype, we'll look at the schematic, we'll get more into the technical details of it. Um, we'll look at the power amplifier, which is coming from Zach Tech, which he used in his Whisper Beacon. Very, very clever. Again, using modern electronics, it's using a, a CMOS line driver, IC which is a chip that would normally be used to push digital signals down a wire to another board or, you know, across a PC board or whatever. Um, it's an octal. It has eight drivers in it. And by paralleling them all, this little CMOS driver chip will give you around 300 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts output. Um, so a real clever little power amplifier. You're, you're going to get a kick out of that when, I, when we get to the schematic in the next video in this series. Uh, and it's adequate power to make contacts on CW for sure. So that's what's coming in part two, probably a couple of weeks from now, hopefully. Um, we'll see. The next video, though, I don't know what it's going to be yet. I got to start working on that. <laughs> so whatever the next video is, we'll see you there. And uh, that's the CW Flea project that I've begun. So stay tuned. Watch out for part two in the series, maybe in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.